Hello people, this is Nesil Dixit and in this video I am going to show you how you can use value listenable builder and avoid using set state. So as you can see here, this is just a basic counter app. So first what I will do, I will replace the set state method with value listenable builder and later in the video I will also show you how you can take input validation using value listenable builder. So it will make our code more optimized and it will reduce all the unnecessary builds. So this is the project and this is the basic app that we get when we create a new project. It's a basic counter app. Let me align both of these windows alongside. Okay, so I have removed all the comments, but you can see there are only two comments left in our code. Uh, first in this blog increment counter. So what written here is just uh, the introduction of set state that using the set state will call build method again and again and will rerun the build method every time we call set state. The same thing is written inside of build. So basically a build method is the responsible widget is the responsible method that creates the widget for us that creates the UI of whole screen for us. So we don't want the complete screen to rebuild every time we set state. What we can do is we can avoid using set state and we can use value listenable builder. So to see it in action, I am just going to print something in here inside of build method so that every time I set the state, you can see the build method gets rerun. So increment counter using the set state, it will call the build method again and again. So as soon as I press the button, you can see build method call gets printed inside the terminal. This is just because of set state. Okay, now we have seen, we have get to know that how it is affecting the performance because a layout can have many elements on the screen and that all elements will get rebuilt every time we set the state. Just remove the set state, we don't need it here now. And if I re restart the app and now I try to rebuild, nothing will happen because we are not setting the state. UI on the screen will not be getting changed. So what we will be doing, we will use value notifier for this. The counter will be of type value notifier and initial value will be obviously the zero what we were giving earlier. But if we over over the counter, you can see it is of type dynamic. So we want it to be of type integer. We will explicitly define it integer. Now it's of integer type. We don't have counter plus plus any function. So we will have access to the value, the value that is inside of this notifier. This is all fine. We are all done. We just used to, we are just going to apply this or use this somewhere. So if I rerun the app now, you can see some on the screen written value notifier int something hash type. So this is just because it is of type value notifier that we are managing inside of text. So it will, it has printed whatever the counter is holding. We don't want it here. Just cut this. And now is the main part of the video. We are applying value listenable builder. What it will do, it will just listen to the value notifier. We have a notifier with us that is counter we made earlier and we have a builder function that is going to build whatever we want inside of it. The first thing we take is context and the second thing we will be getting is the value, the value of type integer because of this value notifier and the third thing I am mentioning it child here, you will get to know in the later part of this video. I return the text field inside of it, the text widget, sorry. So it will just print whatever the text we have written. So we just have to print this count. Count means the counter dot value. This is of type integer and we are good to go. Now if I rerun the app, you can see that the app is working completely fine and I press the button, the account gets incremented and the build method is now called only for once. So let's do a quick check again inside of the builder method of value listenable builder. 
I am again adding a print statement so that we can see how many times this method gets built and how many times the complete build called. So the first time both are for once and as we press the button only inside of value listenable builder this builder method gets built again and again but the whole build method is not getting built. So this is the difference. So we don't need to rebuild the state again and again for a single value. Now I am going to apply this for input validation. So I am just managing the state of an error if the input is valid or not. So I, I made a variable named input error. This is of type bool. It will be true or false but initially I am keeping it false. And now we are just going to make a text field in here. We will be using child property here also. So let's define a value listenable builder here also. And the value will be of type input error. The builder method is going to have obviously the context and the value which will be in this case of type bool because the listen notifier is of boolean type. Child and return. So inside of it I will be using a column. The first child will be of text field but I am keeping the text field as child. So I am going to mention it child here and the second thing will be the text the in the error message i am going to display so i am just writing text here text will be uh, something like wrong input and now i am going to style it somewhat so that we can see it's a error so i am uh, keeping it as red so text style color here we mentioned colors dot red okay so this text will be of type red but it should not be shown everywhere every time so there should be somewhat something that we can toggle so let's mention the child property of value loss value listenable builder this child has to be mandatory because it sits inside of column it's because of null safety. So I mentioned a text field inside of child with an on changed value. So if the input error dot value is true, then we will show wrong input. Otherwise, we will just return a container. You can see on changed here. Here is the text field. Wrong input is written over here. Okay, I should make it false also. You can see that we are doing validation inside of cha on change property, on change callback, but we are not using set state anywhere in the code. We are just using or modifying the value of value notifier, input error value notifier dot value is equal to true or false based on the condition. So here is our text field. If I restart the app, you can see as the text for fails to fulfill our condition it shows the wrong input and if it gets fulfilled so it will just show no error you can see it here the condition and the builder method so the complete screen is now not getting rebuilt again and again it is just building for once and the builder method inside of value listenable builder for separate listenables are getting rebuilt for the respective change notifiers or we can say value notifier actually value notifier extends change notifier inside of it so this is all about the value listenable builder using value notifier is actually a good practice to keep your code and your app optimized so this is all about it you can mention the feedback of this video in the comment section and you can suggest another topic to make videos on. Bye.